welcome back so far we have discussed the definitions and histories of both united nations and modern un conferences we have discussed how un provides this platform for discussion and debate on important topics of international significance but what we have essentially missed out in all this is how un not only provides this platform but also regulates and organizes it with various rules and regulations so before we move any further Pause the video for 2 minutes and note down your response to the scenarios given on your screen. Consider this. You and your friends are trying to come up with a game plan for your next football match. Given that all of you equally contribute to your team's performance, what rules will you follow in your discussion to ensure that you understand each other's opinions and plans with utmost clarity? Think and write down a few rules. You might have come up with following answers. 1. Taking turns to speak one person at a time. 2. Avoid interrupting others. 3. Listening carefully while others speak. 4. Asking questions to better understand the person. 5. Every member getting a chance to speak. Since most human interactions have similar challenges, these rules are applicable not only to your football team but to most human social interactions. These social discussions include various decision making and governmental platforms ranging from the parliaments of your country to your parents weekly office meetings coming to the areas of political discussions such as the UN and the parliaments that deal with highly consequential and sensitive topics there was an urgent need felt to develop a discussion method with rules and strategies to ensure that all aspects of a problem were considered and the opinions of all members of a body were taken into account before making a decision and thus came the roberts rules of order the roberts rules is a parliamentary procedure developed by us army officer henry martin robert which came into existence in 1876 and has been ever since used in various formal platforms internationally including the model un conferences even the parliamentary procedures followed by various western parliaments and international organizations such as the us senate and european union are based on these fundamental rules some of these common rules are one is setting of an agenda which is selecting a topic for discussion in order to keep the discussion smooth and focused on the issue at hand second is the presence of a moderator since a high number of people would like to present their views this would require an impartial moderator who would guide the speakers and prevent chaos third is formal discussion framework where the moderator would recognize the speaker for a pre-mentioned amount of time and the speaker would get to speak for the entire time without being interrupted fourth is voting procedure for any decision to be taken by a formal group there needs to be voting and the voting would ratify the decision taken with a majority which is either a 50% simple majority or a 2/3 special majority introduction of subtopics since each main topic will have various parts to talk about introduction of subtopics and their discussions are considered important to achieve an in-depth understanding of each other's views on the agenda at hand power to ask question or point of information this points allows a participant to ask questions to the speaker and seek additional information point of privilege This point is used by a participant if one feels any form of physical discomfort in the meeting like the speaker not being audible or wanting to use the washroom among others. Let us summarize our learning this week. In the first module, we have discussed the definitions of United Nations organization and model UN conferences. In the second module, we have explored the history and evolution of UN and model UN conferences. In our third module, we have understood the role of Robert's rules of procedures in model UN procedures, and some of these rules are: one, setting an agenda, which is selecting a topic of discussion; second, is the presence of a moderator, whose role is to monitor and guide the debate; third, is speaker recognition, that helps all the participants understand all points of view clearly; fourth, is voting, that helps in decision making with the consent of the majority of members; fifth, is subtopic selection. that helps explore the main topic more in detail sixth is point of information which is a request to ask a question 
Seventh is point of privilege, which is a request to address personal discomfort. Keeping these fundamental rules in mind, next week we will explore the phases of Model UN conferences and the three widely accepted conference procedures followed by Model UN conferences from all over the world. Thank you.